I guess it's time for episode seven of the last looks. I guess I have to leave that. Well, hello everybody. We're back. Finally, finally back after all these months. And uh, yes, I've been around. I've been around. Okay, okay, I'm not John Lennon. This is, you know, kind of Halloween-ish time. Late September, I thought I'll do an early... Uh, if I do a costume, I don't know for Halloween, but I thought this is a good kind of fake Halloween <laughs> costume. I'm back. Oh, God. Yes, I'm back. Well, I'm back now only just because I need to shut this thing down. I need to close it out. Had the first six episodes of uh, The Last Looks. And, oh, by the way, yeah, new mic. It's it's kind of cheap. Actually, I got it clearance at, uh, I don't know, I think uh, JCPenney or something. And it came with a really awful little camera because it's i don't know i think it's like four years five years old but the camera sucked but the mic i think i tested it and it seemed okay so anyway we're back and uh yeah it's been this long because uh i didn't want to do it anymore <laughs> but uh here's the thing i knew that i was gonna put the uh, last looks as a 12 episode uh series and i decided that uh I'll do the first six. I did them last uh, year, I think, from from summer till till winter, and I'm doing it again. The last half, let's say, because they always split things up now, like The Walking Dead and all these shows. Now it's not just a whole thing. You have to have one half and then the second half. That's uh, a bunch of bullshit. So that's why I did it too, because I'm a bullshitter. <laughs> but anyway. But anyway, that's my catchphrase, trademark. Um, I, I, I've had to come back, I guess, to finish it off, put it in the grave. And in fact, I want to address something uh, that I s teased at during the first part of this Last Looks, which was the opening segments where I had the numbers, you know, instead of one, two, three, four for the number of the show. I did uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, or something like that. I, I don't even remember. I haven't looked at them in a long time since I made them. And so uh, the intention, I'm not going to do that anymore. I just decided to throw that, scrap it. It just because I, I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go, but I had an idea. And the idea was, bum, 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 everyone who was curious, the times were meant to represent sort of from the time a person dies till the time they finally get buried or whatever, put in the ground or cremated or whatever. So, it was meant, But it was also meant to look like you were checking into a hotel. So that's why I would have, you know, the phrases about checking in or, or you know, your your name is getting called and all that kind of thing. But then I also had the numbers, which were just representing time. And the end, the idea was that starting from one, it would go to 12 because there were 12 episodes and therefore 12 midnight, the witching hour, uh, that was going to be, you know, when you finally realize, Oh, I'm buried or I'm cremated or, Oh, that's what this is. It was supposed to be a real gradual sort of reveal, but, but not explaining it. And I just kind of thought, you know, I don't know how much more of these times and what other things you do when you check in. I mean, get your luggage 
put up stairs and whatnot. And, you know, I, I, it could I could have done it, but I just didn't want to bother anymore. It, it's been so long since I started that idea that it became like a moot point when I re kicked this half. Um, so there were people that asked about it, and I'm sure anybody who's seen those was didn't didn't know what was going on with that intro. That's what was happening. So it was meant to be from the time you died till the time you got, you know, put away, uh, you know, in a mausoleum or whatever. And I was trying to hint towards that, but I was also trying to play it like a hotel room, like you're checking in, but you're checking out. But I didn't want it. That's why I didn't want it to be checking out. I wanted it to be you're checking in because that's a whole process, right? As a person, when you're going into a hotel or a motel, you, you, you're a person, you got luggage, you got all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then you got to go to the front desk and then you got to pick up a key and you got to get it and then go to up to the elevator and find the room and get in the room and blah, blah, blah. So it was all this time checking of checking in. But the joke was it was checking out. Okay, so there it is. That's that's what it was, if anybody was wondering. And you could go back and kind of, I'll have to go back and look where I was going. But um, that's what that was. And by the way, uh, now that I got that out of the way, I, I hope you liked the intro that I just did uh, for this new episode, episode number seven. I'll just call it episode seven. Not seven o'clock or whatever, but uh, number seven. Here we are doing the back half, and uh, I hope you like that intro. The fact of the matter is, while I'm doing this right now, while you're listening to me and I'm talking to you, I haven't done the intro yet. Yeah, I did, but I'm, I'm going to get to it. It's something I, you know, the intros are kind of fun to do. They're more fun than this, and this was easy to do, so that's why I thought I'm going to get this out of the way, the commentary and the clip, and then I'll do the worry about the intro and all the cutting. That's the hardest editing is the intro. Um, and I have a, a nice little shirt here, which it looks, it's weird. It looks blue, uh, on the camera. It's supposed to be green. I was going to do a green screen, maybe thing with it while I was commentating, but I don't know if I will or not. And, oh, he heard me burp. I do. I, this is not beer. This is actually, um, not tea either. This is, uh, well, it is tea. It's a Long Island iced tea I got. It's one of those club drinks, those ones you buy at the liquor store, just a can, and it's pre-mixed. But they're pretty good. Um, and I'll have beer and wine and stuff later uh, in other episodes. But So to, to preface this now that we've gotten past all that, I want to say that because of the growing up in the past, uh, sharing my past, a lot of people wonder how uh, I'm a, how I, I got to musically where I am. I was born in 1963, and my biggest you know groups that I love are the Beatles, uh, the Monkees, the Doors. Love Jimi Hendrix. Um, even I like the Who. A lot of people don't like the Who for some reason, but musically, damn, they're good. Maybe it's because of Daltrey's voice. I don't know. But musically, they're great. And then, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, you know. So I have this sort of 60s, 70s. Uh, that's where I grew up musically. Mostly the late 60s, early 70s. So that's where I was heavy, you know, because uh, 63, by the time I'm four, maybe 67, that's, uh, that's like when the Beatles are, you know, right in their prime. But I don't, I don't, I'm, I, I can't consciously say I remember them. Uh, while they were big, but I do remember seeing on the news when they broke up. I do remember that, and it was a big deal. And that was like 70, 71, so I was eight years old, maybe. Um, but I, and then the music, though, was probably in the background. I just didn't, I wasn't conscious of it. And I think, uh, because what happened was, I was a TV kid, you know, and... It's funny because God, I, I think that I don't even think we had a color TV till, uh, you know, the mid '70s or early '70s, maybe, if we were lucky. But uh, we had black and white TVs and little, you know, little ones in a small place. And here's what: so the Beatles again. I, I, I I'm going to take these glasses off because I'm going to go blind. But um, the Beatles, you know, I didn't. Again, I wasn't aware of them, and the monkeys. I probably was more aware of the monkeys than the Beatles. 
and uh, because they came a little bit later, and plus what happened was they ran their their show on Saturday mornings after it got canceled on on prime time. So we're talking like 1970, probably 69, 70, 71, when they were on Saturday morning, and that was a kid's big deal in the 70s. Let me tell you. But that's why I want to get to what I'm going to talk about. Um, <laughs> but before I talk about that, uh, I do want to say the first record I got, or one of the first ones I got, was this one right here. Everything's Archie. And it didn't even have that song on here. That was the theme song of the show. Everything's Archie. It had a thing in the back. And uh, this was black and white, and I colored it in as a kid. So this was one of my first, first records. So musically, that's where I sort of originate, the Archies. And then this is the second album, Jingle Jangle or Jangle Jingle. I don't know. <laughs> and they had, they, they, these were, oh, sorry, I hit the mic. These were pretty good, actually. For pop and bubblegum, I mean, they're, they're no worse than like what's on now, like BTS and all that kind of crap. Uh, anyway. <laughs> It's it's just as and the, what's cool is I looked at the times on these and every song is like two minutes two and a half I don't think they go further than two forty so they're these quick little bangers you know and they're really well produced actually now these the monkeys were produced by Don Kirshner who or not the the monkey the Archies albums these the Archies were produced by Don Kirshner who did do the monkeys and famously got in a battle with them over the music and and that and that's why i think he went to a cartoon he said the cartoon guys i can't they can't argue back you know they're just a cartoon but before the archies and after the monkeys right here and now this is not my original album this i found at like a garage sale or something it's really super scratched up and I mean, it's just hell. It's, it's like, uh, you know, a, a meat cleaver ran over it. And I've played it, and, you know, I mean, but it's playable. I mean, you can hear the songs. It's just, just all this scratch noise. And it's, I did the masking tape, I think, myself. And uh, it, it seems to be owned by Tanya. There goes my... I don't know. She wrote her name up here somewhere. But... It's called uh, We're the Banana Splits. The Banana Splits, Saturday morning uh, show. And uh, let's put it here so it don't fall down. Uh, there we go. So it was a Saturday morning show. And the, if, if I had got the camera in close on the, the date, it would be 1968, which is literally like the year after the monkeys. Um, broke up let me i'm gonna grab it again because <laughs> i have to point out this is flegel he was a beagle hence the name flegel beagle and he was designed i think after davy jones he had these puppy dog eyes and he was the main guy he was the lead guy they also they all wore these weird firehouse hats it's kind of kooky now this was the drummer, he was a monkey, a literal monkey, or well, an orangutan, with a big smile, and I'm pretty sure he was designed after uh, Mickey Dolan's, because he had that smile, and he was the drummer. Then we have Drooper. Now, Drooper's interesting, because Drooper has this Texas twang, and he's also very laid back, and he is very much Michael Nesmith, uh, Mike of the Monkeys. And so uh, we're left then with Snorky, which is an elephant, and he is actually a silent, a silent, silent. Hello. Hello, Long Island Iced Tea. Ah, so he was a silent. He was like a Harpo. Harpo Marx of the Marx Brothers, but he also had that Peter Tork sort of, because Peter Tork was kind of a harpo in a, a way of the monkeys. He he didn't really talk much, and when he did, he always said something stupid, and everybody was like, oh, get out of here. 
So he was kind of the the Peter Tork. So they were kind of designed after the monkeys, I think, and they literally took right over after the monkeys show was canceled. Uh, and I used to have a coloring book when I was a kid. I remember that very specifically, and I wish I still had it. But uh, I was uh, so that's how I remember that I was into the banana splits at like sixty eight, sixty nine. I think the show ran two, and then basically the Archies took over from then. So sixty nine, I would have been like six years old, seven, uh, six years old, yeah, nineteen sixty three, sixty nine. So I was a young tyke, but that I can honestly tell you those the Archies and the banana splits were the very first music that I got into. I could play the records. I could listen to them over and over. You didn't have to wait for the radio, you know. And, you know, there's all those radio hits were going on in the background, of course, too. That's why I said I, I knew they were around. I just wasn't, like, buying their records, I guess you could say. All right. So what we're going to look at is episode one of the first season I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the whole episode, but it's one that's on YouTube, and I will have a link for it. Now the show, the Banana Split show, I'm grabbing my headphones. I'm ready to go. Uh, was really basically laughing, and it was just a bunch of quick skits, real short jokes, uh, certain running characters, and I'll. Go over them when the clip is playing to let you know. Uh, gag, running gags. Uh, it had great scenery and background because it was a cartoonish. It was a mix of live action. There was some cartoons, Arabian Nights, and uh, Three Musketeers. And then there was a segment called Danger Island. And the interesting thing about all of this, Danger Island and the live action bits with the Banana Splits guys was that all that stuff was directed by Richard Donner. Recognize that name, Richard Donner? Poor guy, he just passed away, I think, this year, a few, just a few months ago, I think. So sad. But he was a genius. Genius, an underrated director. Did the Superman movies, of course, everyone remembers, or at least the first one. He did do the second one, and then uh, the Beatles guy took over. Dick Lester. But... Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> I need to get to this clip because I've, I'm feeling this uh, Long Island iced tea and it's feeling really good. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is, oh, I have it here somewhere. There it is. So we'll start the clip. And um, I'll talk about the things in it and about it. Also, I do want to say the music was good. Again, it wasn't Don Kirshner, but it was produced by some pretty good guys. And uh, there's a couple of, at least two songs that I personally have in my, you know, collection that I have to have. I love those two songs. But And there might be a couple more, but... Uh, here we go. Banana Splits. TV show, Saturday morning, 1968. Oh, boy. I miss those days. Let's start. And the song is really famous. Here's Drooper, here's Flegel. <laughs> now the amusement parks, they, they filmed them at a few different uh, amusement parks. I'll put these on now. And... So the amusement parks were in Texas. I think it was Six Flags in Texas. And then uh, one in Ohio, I think called Kings Island, I believe. Uh, 
So they, every episode they had their intros and they came in all goofy. Okay, let's just. I'll talk more, but let me just watch. Let's just see what's going on here. Banana Split Club business. Bingo, as official temporary second banana, please check attendance. Yeah, but we all know who's here, Fleeg. Why don't I just check off the names of the members who aren't here? Hey, how are you going to do that, Bingo? <laughs> well, I'll just say, all the members of the Banana Splits who aren't here, do not raise your hands. <laughs> 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 and the members who aren't here won't raise their hands. That's it. Then all Bingo will have to do is count the hands that aren't raised and mm. hold it. So you guys got me talking silly. Please just call. So if you don't well, okay, recognize that is Paul Winchell. He was a very Hello. famous Hello. ventriloquist, the voice Hello. of Flegel. You know something? Roll, call roll, hero. Basketball and bounce them the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so there are all these quicky little jokes. Look at this is this is cool. Uh, this is funny to me. It's Marx Brothers, you know. It's monkeys. It's little Three Stooges, Dash, and. Trying to throw away. <laughs> he was funny with the glasses. He used to always do that. And you, you know, it's funny is because the the costume he can't even see out of the costume, right? It's just a big thing up here. But he was smart enough to need to go, you know. So he, sorry, he would reach up up here doing that. It's just crazy. Oh, uh, here's so there's a cartoon. Yeah, the Arabian Nights. And uh, they were okay. They were uh, the cartoons were like individual little cartoons. They didn't have any connection to the next cartoon. It wasn't a serial. They each one just was its own episode. And they had the characters were all. They had a guy. So let's see if I can remember all this. There was a guy who could change his shape. That little uh, little guy with the turban size of an elephant and then he would turn into an elephant or something and uh the the kid was just a normal kid i think if i remember the guy who's the main this guy right here so he couldn't change into anything but he got these people he had like a big genie kind of guy at last we meet greetings fat tyrants no it's very interesting because that's what's weird about this time like sin like I talked about Sinbad movies so there was a lot of interest in this kind of Arabian Nights and Arabian and Pirates and swashbuckling and uh, and it carried over into like these cartoons I shall be back for my throne oh shit what's he doing he's gonna throw coconuts in there yeah, he's the main bad guy. He's the guy that's always chasing him. So you see that guy all the time in all the other episodes. Look no further, Vangor. There he is. So this is really just a precursor to Aladdin. And uh, but he never gets a lamp or anything. He just has these helpers. Yeah, I forget. This is the first episode, so. Um, we're just going to see all this intro stuff. Trust me, your highness. Rosan Kobar. Oh. Okay, so he, yeah, he's the guy that can slip through doors and locks and he can go under, he, he like turns to dust or something. Yeah, he's not, he's not the, uh, he's not the size of an elephant guy. quicker than using the trap door. And to whom do I owe my hmm. thanks? To Farik the Magician, master magician. of magic, defier of the unbelieving, and possessor of the unknown. What? But, uh, we'd better get out of here, your highness. Classic animation, we too. Flying carpet. A pity, I'm fresh out of flying carpets. <laughs> Very minimal flying movement. Flotar, but, you know, you have to remember, they were pumping these things out every Saturday morning, so... You can't spend too much time on these uh, animations. <laughs> Just get the point across. 
Remind me to order a dozen of these tables, Varik. <laughs> a flying table? Far. Not even we a cloth, just a table. The magic of flight. Oh. Well, his old has to <laughs> So no flying carpet, but visits the flying table. He will help us. Turhan, uh -oh. behind us. We are being pursued. Oh. Up ahead, Farik. The Caves of Doom. Quickly, head for the entrance. With the help of Bez the Beast, they will have a chance. Stand close, my friends. Size of an elephant! God, cut them down! Stop them! Come here, beast! Got him! Alright. Sorry, I had to... I had, this was... The cartoon was going on a bit. I like watching them, but not when I'm commenting. But also, my, my phone ran out of uh, space. It said, you're done, you can't fit anymore, so I had to stop and clear it out. But we're back, and there you got to see the, the size of an elephant guy right there in the green. And they get this donkey that is does a spinny thing and knocks everything out. There's the giant, basically a strong man, the magic guy. Oh yeah, she can, I guess, change herself into old women or weird people. Yes. So anyway, this was the, the uh, you know, this was the main uh, cartoon, uh, would you lead us to and then, yes. then let I think, and take I don't remember if they alternated them, but there was a, a Three Musketeers one, cartoon also, so I don't know if maybe land. one weekend From it was Arabian forward, Nights, the other we weekend it was the, uh, the Three Musketeers, oh, it was yes. called the we Banana Splits you, Hour, so maybe there in the first half hour there was this, the second half hour was that. But they also had Danger Island, which was a live action kind of serial. So that thing continued. And you can find on YouTube, it's really cool, you can find the full, like just the serial alone. Directed again by Richard Donner. So here we go. The banana splits. Doing their jokes. Okay, this is pretty good. Oh, here's one. Dear Drooper, if I build a better mousetrap, will I be a big success? Signed, Inventive. <laughs> Dear Inventive, you'll be a success unless somebody builds a better mouse. Oh, so look, look at the background. See, I love the 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 anim the cartoon the drawings of a background instead of a real background. Here's the music here. So they did, you know, the green screen stuff. And, uh, it was just cheesy pop, bubblegum they called it, right? Bubblegum pop. Because it's like pre-preteen maybe. <laughs> it's probably toddler rock, you know. Uh, but I bought into it for sure. Like I said, this was 68. I was only six years old, so come on, man. And I still like it. It's still, to me, it still has a little touch of an edge in it, you know. But who, you know, it's all pop and entertainment. Like saturated, uh, you know, lowest common denominator almost. But hey, you know, they always look at this. I mean, it's just kind of trippy for TV and for kids, you know. I guess it's like, you know, hey, kids, you can't do drugs, but check it out. We'll make it look like you're doing drugs. <laughs> I mean, you have to remember, this is late 60s, man. I think TV didn't know how to handle psychedelia, you know. So they wanted to, they were trying to commercialize it, in a sense, but... And then it runs into the ground of, well, are you condoning it? Or, you, you know, why would you have kid shows do this kind of stuff? But of course now... It's great. It's like cult classic stuff, cult movie stuff. 
you know, it's it's underground. It's it's very subversive. You know, it's dangerous, like John Waters movies, and you know, it's this kind of thing where the you, you, you weren't sure exactly what they were trying to do. They were trying to copy copy and emulate things, but they were doing it to a, an extent where, uh, you know, you you really weren't sure if you were a parent back then and like a straight laced, you know. Christian high collar, like, should I let my kid watch this? You know, it's kind of wild. <laughs> Here's Danger Island. Oh, great. So we're going to get some of this. Oh, this is a full intro, too. This, the music is cool. I don't know. I'm hoping the music will play. Look at the editing. And it was all filmed out on location. Chango. Uh-oh, Chango. That was the catchphrase. And Chango in Spanish is monkey. So that's why it was kind of, you know, when you're a Spanish-Mexican kid like me, uh, you hear those phrases kind of dropped into shows. Oh, I know that word. It's Spanish, but, you know, I understand it. <laughs> And they never, I don't think they even really explained it in the show. They don't say why he's called Chango. They just say, Chango, his name is Chango. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was good. She was hot. But uh, <laughs> even as a kid, I knew. Um, yeah, oh, Chango. That was like a catchphrase that they would say in every episode at some point when they would get into battle or something. Also, you saw in the titles and the credits or whatnot, Jan Michael Vincent, man. Jan Michael Vincent, who was a big deal in the early 70s. He was in one of my favorite Disney movies, which is probably considered a bad movie by now of standards or whatever, but like a, not bad, I just mean like a, you know, like a B, C level movie was uh, the world's greatest athlete where he was like this Tarzan kid and he got recruited by you know some coach to to compete here we go oh yeah so there's pirates real pirates not like like I mean these are like real like his uh, like Columbia or whatever you know those ones you hear about that that they're not arg you know hook hand uh, <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean pirates, these guys are just nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> but they're, you know, homogenized for this show. Got my drink. I gotta take another swig of this Long Island. I'm ready to pass out. Dad, aren't they fabulous? Leslie, they're more than fabulous. This just might provide the first step to probing my theory. Fantastic. So there's about uh, five minutes left here. And when this episode ends, or this clip ends, I will just say, okay, let's get back later, or after I cut. You can probably see my eye. Just go down, map the area, come right back, and no more 40 minutes stays, right? All right, there you go. Get in there. I mean, look at this. They had to film this on the water. It's treasure they find. Here come the pirates. <laughs> oh, look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> I don't like the looks of that. Let's, uh, let's put this down below. <laughs> don't like the looks of this. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We don't oh, have shit. 
Oh no. He's got a cover? That ain't gonna work. <laughs> These guys are just, you know, they're ruthless. Ooh. Oh, this guy's good too. <laughs> the lead pirate. Oh, yeah, and we're not going to see him. He's a good actor in this show. With the latest news. Here's Flegel Beagle. Leon Tittle, local glass blower, had a rather unpleasant experience yesterday. While blowing a large bottle, Leon hiccuped. <laughs> Mr. Tittle is now living inside of a huge glass bottle. <laughs> <laughs> she hiccuped herself into the bottle. Again, the laugh in. <laughs> what happened? Oh, mouse trap. Damn. <laughs> now the costuming is pretty good too. I gotta say, you know, this is. I think even Disney <laughs> at the time didn't have costumes this good. Ready, Fletcher. Hey, Drooper, now what are you trying to teach your trained flea? Ballet? <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, but Fletcher's getting pretty good at playing the piano. Listen, hit it, Fletcher. <laughs> that Fletcher's pretty good. <laughs> well, he's just great. And if he keeps that up, I'll get him into showbiz. Hear that, Fletcher? You're going to be famous. <laughs> Something's gonna happen. I don't remember how it goes, but oh man, I thought he was gonna get smashed. Well, anyway, there's the theme song. Richard Donner, you just saw his name, and you know, uh, <laughs> Jay North. Uh, there are people that say Bob Marley's song "Buffalo Soldier" uh, had was influenced by this song, the "Tra La La" part. Because there is that part in his song, Buffalo Soldier. And he did his song like 10 years or so after this. And I guess recently people are trying to say, no, it's not true. But I'm pretty sure it's true because I did hear about it way back, oh, excuse me, way back when. Almost like he admitted that he liked the show and that's what influenced him. So I don't know if people are trying to erase that from history, but. Don't believe it. Listen to this song. Listen to his song. Ten years later, come on. It's obvious. And it's not like, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Why wouldn't he incorporate a, a song he grew up with as a kid? You know, it's influence. Yeah. The world sucks. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That was the Banana Splits, and... Uh, I think, uh, let me get this off here. Ugh. I think um, that should give you some insight into uh, my history and childhood. And uh, I still hold on to it today, <laughs> as we all do. Anyway, um, let me, let's look how low down now my... Uh, Long Island iced tea is, and you all know how strong those are. So let me finish this off, and uh, I'll see you on the outro.
Boys in the jungle All around I told you so All I want Is you Oh, so, uh, Vernie, yes, yes. What, what? what are we doing under the table? Well, it's... it's oh, 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 Grody! Oh, oh, yeah, that oh, guy over there. Oh, 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 yeah, I see what you mean. Yes. I'll check you later. Oh, no, then. please. Oh, God. Oh, no. Help. Hello, everybody. We're going to have a good time.